tell me a little bit about your role in this. About my, sorry? Your role. My role, I play, uh, I play drill instructor Rosales, um, who is the drill hat, as he's known uh, uh, technically. Uh, he sort of takes Jeremy Pope's character, Ellis, under his wing, and he, um, he shows him a little bit of compassion. He sees real potential, real leadership skills in him, and, and, he, and, he, he, and I think he tries his best to build him up as a Marine. And, and uh, you know, this is an underdog story, and I think Rosales is the kind of person who roots for the underdog. So, um, yeah, that's a little bit about, about Rosales. Can you speak about collaborating with Elegance? Yeah, I mean, I, I first met Elegance at the Tribeca Film Festival. Uh, he approached me when I had uh, We the Animals there, and he, you know, he talked to me about the film, but at the time I had a lot going on, and, and so when the opportunity to, to read or audition for it, the film came about, I was like, I was so excited. I read the script, and the script was just, there's just not a moment in the script that's that's a miss i mean the entire from, from beginning to end and i feel the same about the the, fi the finished product i think elegance has done an incredible job this story is so personal to him uh and that you don't get with every film you know so this this is really it's, it's been a special process um do you know how much of it is sort of like imagined or exaggerated versus like strictly autobiographical is there like a blend in it, it, it there is a blend i mean it's based off true on true events but it's not autobiographical so there are elements of it that are you know from <laughs> elegance's experiences but then there are things that are imagined as well so tell us about your role in the film uh, my role in the film, uh, I play Alistair Bowles, he's a bit of a, a knucklehead, uh, you know, he starts out kind of at odds with, with French, but over the, over the course of the film, you know, he gains respect for French, you know, not, not only just as a human being, but his fellow black, black brother that he feels like he has to, you know, kind of protect, so, um, yeah, you, you see French grow, you see every character in this film grow as, as it goes along, but especially Bowles, too. You know. What resonated with you about the script and story? Why did you want to be involved? It's just beautiful. It's, it's a story that, that needs to be heard right now. You know, and those are the those are the projects that I want to be a part of. You know what I mean? So, you know, when 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 a script jumps off the page, that's what I'm looking for. You know. Um, you have some music coming out of here? Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Just stay on the lookout for that. Stay on the lookout for that. So, um, so tell me a little bit about your role in the film. Yeah, I think my, my role, Ryan, he's, uh, he's a troubled, troubled person. He's got a lot of stuff going on in his head. He's got a lot of anxiety, a lot of, I would say, mental illness. I think he's pretty much going to... Here you're learning, here you're to war, to boot camp, one of the most important with the intention of harm, like maybe suicidal, maybe taps into that. That's kind of something that Elegance and I discussed, and so that was what Ryan was carrying throughout this film. And uh, and then I, Ryan, saw, you know, found his strength, his power through watching Jeremy, and, and yeah. So, what was key to getting into character for you? What was key to getting into character? We had about a, a, a week and a half before we started shooting a boot camp, and I think that time to really talk to Elegance and, and kind of collaborate on, on what we, we wanted for Ryan, I think that, that time was crucial. And so, yeah, a lot of meditating, a lot of journaling, and tapping into some darker times of my life. Uh, tell me about your vision for the costume. Um, the vision, the very green world that it was. Um, I think it was the beautiful part about it that the costumes kind of obviously camouflage and I love how we get to really get into the facial expressions of all the characters and the actors. So it was like real intimate. Um, do you also design clothes or what's your fashion background? I do design clothes. I um, started off in merchandising and then I got into film about 12, 13 years ago and then it's been designing for seven years now. Yeah. What do you love about um, working on the medium of cinema? The storytelling, the building the world, I mean, really digging, you know, with the creators, the writers, producers, getting into, like, the background of each character and, like, trying to figure out who this person is. And so speak about writing this very personal story. What was that like for you? Uh, this story is really important to me. I wrote this film, The Inspection, for anyone who's ever felt disregarded, anyone who's ever felt overlooked, to watch a movie that can make you feel powerful by the end. And that's what this film is. Um, you know, when I went into the Marine Corps, 
it had come after 10 years of being homeless. I thought I was completely worthless because of who I am, because of being black, because of being gay, right? But then my drill instructor told me that I mattered because I had a responsibility to protect the person to my left and to my right. That was an empowering bit of knowledge, and I'm so happy to share that with other people. Can you speak a little bit about assembling your cast? Ascent, what do you mean by that? Just like casting everyone, meet, the, the meetings, all that. I want to shout out Kim Coleman, yes. uh, our casting director, our, our brilliant casting director who casted all of our actors. But for the most part, when we were in development, when we got to uh, uh, maybe halfway through, we started, Elegant started to uh, imagine the actors that were going to play the part. And uh, Gabby and Jeremy, you know, these parts were written for them, even yeah. Raul. Yeah, it had to be Jeremy Pope in this role because, you know, a lot of black queer people are going through so much. You know, eight times more likely to commit suicide, eight times more likely to be homeless. One in two black queer men will be HIV positive in their lifetime. We needed a person who was black and queer and authentically confident in their own skin to be a hero, to be a light to people, to say, you know what, I matter, I have a purpose, and whatever I'm going through right now doesn't define me. I so said, if anyone who has read the script, The Inspection, and met Elegance, it would be a no-brainer that you'd want to be a part of it. The story, when I first read it, was so authentic. It was heartbreaking, but it also had a lot of hope with teeth. And that was one of the things that we really gravitated toward, where we were about, you can't make something about us without us. And we wanted to make sure there was representation in front of and behind the scenes with that. Tell us about your role in this. My role, I play a, uh, a military marine recruit uh, uh, named Castro. Um, in the storyline, I am seen in a lot of different ways. I, I, I kind of start off a bit abrasive, uh, and I'm a guy that has his own arc in the story, and ultimately I befriend French, who is played by Jeremy Pope, and one could say we all end up singing Kumbaya to an extent. What was key to getting into character for you? Oh, man. Um, I think there's... there's uh, it's multifaceted, maybe. Uh, I mean, mentally and emotionally, um, I had this guy next to me, our director, um, Elegant Spratton, who got us all uh, feeling secure within the storyline because, I mean, with a film as heavy as this one and so close to him, can feel very cathartic. So he was always very good at being uh, so transparent and vulnerable with us. So it automatically um, led us to be a, a, more vulnerable within ourselves to, to, and to not have fear to tell that story because it can be a bit jarring at times and it's a little scary because there's obviously very dark moments in the movie and then the physical aspect of it all I tried to get a little bit in shape because this guy these guys they don't necessarily start look like Marines but through the middle and toward the end they start embodying uh, kind of that uh, the, the physical aspect of it so got a little got a little in shape toward the end of the film can you speak about collaborating with Elegance and what you admire about him as a writer and a filmmaker? Oh my gosh. Well, I first the first uh, time I became aware of Elegance, I read this huge article that the New York Times had done on him for Peer Kids. I didn't know him. I was just a fan reading an article. And I was like, this guy is really dynamic and powerful. And uh, maybe a couple years later, a year later, he sent me this script. And then I saw his name. I saw Effie's name. I was like, oh, oh I've, I've hit the jackpot. Um, and it's a, it's a beautiful, uh, incredibly emotional, complicated story um, that, that's his and so personal. And me, as a parent of a queer child, it's very personal. So all of us just clung, you know, clung on together and created space for all of the feelings. Um, but more so than anything, created space for healing through the work. What was key to getting into character for you? Finding her, uh, her, her humanity. Uh, normally, people like this in real life, I tend to write off. I tend to, you know, call all kinds of names. But a child of God, and uh, I just don't. I don't. I, I generally write them off. Like there's, there's no helping them. But as again, as a parent of a queer child, anything that that I can do to to create more connections for my child to be seen and loved um, and considered. I will do. And this was just one of those things. Why was it important for you to be a part of this project? This, this story is black and it's queer. It centers that story. It centers um, the narrative that we are strong and we are more than enough. I wanted to champion elegance. I wanted to take care of elegance. This is his feature film debut. 
Um, and I knew that by him putting his story and his truth on the line, that comes at a cost. So I am here to support him in all the ways um, and to remind people out there that have been disposed and feel like they are not enough, that that is a lie and you are stronger than you, than, than you could ever imagine. So you're producing a new play. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I am. I'm producing a... Wow, I'm producing, well, I'm editing my, uh, my uh, horror film and uh, with Monique and Glenn Close and Andrew Day in New York. But I'm also um, producing this play, this unbelievable play called Ain't No Mo. And it's a comedy about the last African Americans leaving to Africa on a plane. A... Uh, a drag queen is your flight attendant, and Obama is your pilot. Written by Jordan Cooper, and it's it's just brilliant. It's it's a, it's it's. I'm so excited about it. I've never been to Broadway before. My first time. And so, what what attracted you to Jordan's writing, and how did you connect with him? With Jordan, yeah. I was um, I was uh, you know I was it was in the middle of Empire, and as I was um, I forgot. That Empire started all of this. Like it wouldn't have, we wouldn't have had a Black Panther or Blackish, all of that start insecure. It all started with Empire. If I was so busy worried about Cookie's hat or the music that I wasn't focused on um, the change that was happening. So when I went to look for other writers for my next project, um, there weren't any. So I had to come to New York City, and uh, the Public Theater introduced me to um, Jordan. And the rest is history. Oh, so he, he, he's written this incredible piece, um, a comedy for BET called Miss Pat. Jordan will be the youngest uh, playwright on Broadway ever. Right now it's currently held by Lorraine Hansberry for Raisin in the Sun. So I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's not your, it's not, see black people don't come out to theater. You know, unless it's Denzel or Sam Jackson. Broadway does not speak to us, you know? This speaks to us. So hopefully, hopefully what Empire did for television, um, um, Ain't No More will do for Broadway. Let's hope. And, and speaking of your horror film, your four-way into horror, can, are, how excited are you? Terrified. I'm not excited. I'm terrified. I don't, you know, it... it, it I just wanted to check it off the bucket list. So you think it's um, precious, but the uh, the mother isn't beating the kids. The devil is.